Welcome to lecture 30 of the course made in propulsion. Today we will continue with propeller design. The key concepts to be covered in today's lecture is details on the methodical series propeller design procedure and different approaches that can be used under this methodical series design procedure to arrive at the final propeller design. Now, we have seen that there are primarily two design methods that are employed for the design of marine propellers. One is the methodical series propeller design procedure, where the propeller design is based on certain methodical series data, where depending on the input variables, we get a set of geometric parameters belonging to that specific series and the other procedure was designing using the circulation theory. So, here we will discuss the different aspects or the different methodologies in which a propeller can be designed using methodical series. First, we will go through some basic design approaches which are used for preliminary design and then move on to the slightly more detailed design based on the preliminary estimates to get the final design of the propeller for the specific ship characteristics. The first approach that we will study here is to design the optimum RPM for a given propeller diameter. So, the inputs are the propeller diameter and the design speed of the ship. We have the total resistance of the ship at the design speed and a preliminary estimation of the wake fraction, thrust reduction and relative relative efficiency is used for the design. Now, because we do not know the propeller RPM here, we will start with the non-dimensional parameter k t by j square. So, k t can be written in this form and j square is this. Now, T is resistance divided by 1 minus T and V A is V S into 1 minus wake fraction. So, now if we use these two expressions, we can get this particular expression for k t by j square. Why number of propellers here? Because in k t this thrust that we have is for one propeller, but the resistance here is the total resistance of the ship. So, it has to be divided by the number of propeller to find the k t by j square for a single propeller. The same procedure we have already followed in the ship powering extrapolation from model test results. Now, this term is independent of RPM because we want to calculate the optimum RPM from the design process. Next, based on the vibration characteristics and cavitation requirement, we select the initial values of the blade number z and the a e by a 0 ratio, which is the blade area ratio and then we choose a specific methodical series for designing the propeller. Now, it depends on the expertise of the propeller designer while choosing the particular series for the design process. Here, the basis is that when we 
choose the specific series it should be applicable for the propeller design with respect to the operation condition in the specific ship type and the choice of z and a by a0 which is the blade area ratio will lead us to the specific open water diagram for a set of p by d ratio where we will be using this input value to get the propeller design parameters. So, once we choose the methodical series data we have this set of open water diagrams for a varying p by d ratio for the specific value of number of blades z and the blade area ratio as we have seen because every methodical series data is presented as a function of open water characteristics for a specific set of p by d ratio keeping the blade number and the blade area ratio constant and then if they are varied we get new set of data for every geometric parameters ok. Now, here the open water diagram shows the thrust coefficient 10 times the torque coefficient and the open water efficiency for a range of p by d ratio as a function of j. Now, we have already calculated k t by j square from the given requirement and that k t by j square is the calculated value here calculated k t by j square. Now, we need to get the required k t for different pitch ratios so that we can get the optimum geometry of the propeller based on the efficiency characteristics. So, that calculated k t by j square is multiplied by j square to get the required k t over the entire range and this is given by the dotted black line here. So, it is mentioned here the k t by j square within this bracket is given by the same expression as shown in the previous slide ok. And here why do we need this because we need to intersect this line with the k t curves for the different pitch ratios to get the design point for our propeller. Here the red lines correspond to the k t curves the thrust coefficient in the open water and the blue dotted lines are the k q curves ok. Now, we have to intersect the k t by j square multiplied by j square and the k t curves to get the design points and that is shown by the encircled points where it is intersecting. These are the points specifically shown by arrows. So, we can say that these points form the range of design points with respect to different pitch ratio. Let us remove the 10 k q curves for convenience now, the picture is more clear. Now, each of these intersections of the k t by j square multiplied by j square curve and the k t curves at different pitch ratios is a design point for the required propeller and we have seen earlier that as we increase the pitch ratio of the propeller blade the thrust and torque coefficient increases which is shown here in this set of curves. The highest curve here will be for the largest pitch ratio and the curve at the bottom here is for the lowest pitch ratio and because of that the intersection points are different for each curve. So, technically we can go to any of these intersection points and that will be a design point for the required propeller, but there is something important that we need to take care of which is the efficiency. These green lines show the efficiency curves for different values of pitch ratio and we have seen that the open water efficiency increases in range when the pitch ratio is increased. So, for the highest pitch ratio 
the open water efficiency curves has the biggest range in the open water diagram. But locally there will be variations of the maximum efficiency depending on which P by D ratio is used for the efficiency calculation. The next step will be to see at what J and what efficiency these intersections correspond to. Let us take the first value here. So, we have the intersection for the lowest value of the P by D ratio and then corresponding to that efficiency curve for that P by D ratio, we will get the efficiency for that design point. Similarly, if we take the second point, third point and so on, the line will correspond to the intersections with that P by D ratio for which we are getting the intersections. In this way, we can intersect each of these design points with vertical lines corresponding to the P by D ratio for which the K T was given. right? And similarly, we have a set of J values as the design points when we intersect at the corresponding K T curves. Okay. The meaning of these set is that each of these design points where the K T for a particular pitch ratio is equal to the required K T for the design, we will have different efficiencies from the open water diagram. And for a propeller design, we would go for the maximum efficiency possible to make the design effective and reduce the powering demand for the ship. So, the corresponding J values are marked with blue circles and the efficiency values are marked with red circles. Finally, we will choose the J value for the P by D for which we are getting the highest efficiency and we can see here that the highest efficiency is corresponding to this particular point. Now, this point is very important depending on the specific J value at which the required K T intersects with the different K T curves of the propeller, the highest efficiency will correspond to a specific P by D ratio and that P by D ratio can be any P by D depending on the range in which the intersections happen. Here that P by D is an intermediate P by D as we see from the design process and for that specific case we get the j and that j is expressed as v a by n d. Now, we know v a based on the ship speed and the wake fraction and diameter of the propeller was known from the start of the problem and in this way we can get the propeller rpm. And this particular procedure can be repeated for other available blade area ratio values because for each blade area ratio we will get a set of open water diagrams like this for varying P by D ratios. So, the same exercise can be done for other A e by A 0 values and the design can be done. So, here from the methodical series data we get the J value and for the J value we can get the corresponding 10 k q value. From the 10 k q value we can calculate the propeller torque and also the unknown revolution rate that we have seen and we have the open water torque coefficient and with the eta r we can calculate the torque and finally, the delivered power can be calculated. So, this is a preliminary design approach to use the open water characteristics of the propeller to get an optimum rpm for a propeller with given diameter and input ship speed characteristics. In the second approach, we will look into the design problem in just the opposite way. That means, for a given propeller rpm, we will use the same design charts to obtain the optimum propeller diameter. So, we have the propeller rpm and ship speed as inputs. Here again, we have the total resistance and the wake fraction, thrust deduction and relative rotative efficiency as an initial estimate. 
in our discussions of propeller methodical series earlier in this course, a problem was discussed where the propeller diameter was required to be calculated from the given set of open water diagrams for a specific methodical series propeller. There we have used this concept of k t by j raised to the power 4 to calculate the propeller diameter and this particular design approach will help understand that process in a better way. K t is given in this form and j to the power 4 is given in this particular expression. So, if we divide k t by j raised to the power 4, then the diameter term is cancelled and because diameter is an output in this particular design problem, instead of k t by j square which was used in the earlier problem where r p m was the output, here we will use k t divided by j to the power 4. So, that the diameter term is cancelled and we can now calculate this particular expression based on the given input values. Next again based on the blade vibration characteristics and initial value of the z which is the number of blades is chosen and the ratio of a e by a 0 which is the blade area ratio is chosen based on cavitation requirement and we enter the open water diagrams for the particular methodical series for which we will do the calculations. Now again the similar process will be involved, the only change with respect to the previous process is instead of the line which represented k t by j square multiplied by j square in the initial process where r p m was not known, here because we have the diameter as unknown, we use k t by j raised to the power 4 which is given by this expression and multiply with j to the power 4 to get the k t. The implication is that based on the given parameters this expression is already calculated and then just like the previous way we compute this curve and we intersect it with the k t curves for the specific set of open water diagram. So, again this particular set of open water diagram corresponds to a specific value of z and blade area ratio and for different p by d ratios this particular diagram is plotted. Now, because this expression denotes nothing but k t, we intersect this curve with the set of open water k t curves that we have just like before. Okay and we have the different intersection points which are encircled here and also mentioned with arrows. Okay. Now again I should emphasize on this point, this dotted black line represents the required k t and the different red lines are the open water k t curves for different p by d ratios. So, the design point will be the intersection of the required k t with the open water k t curves and for different p by d ratios we have different intersection points each of which is a design point for the propeller and again we will choose the particular design point which gives us the maximum efficiency. So, we follow the same procedure each of these design points are extended by drawing perpendicular lines and we get different j values corresponding to these design points and we have different efficiency values by extending each design point to the corresponding open water efficiency curve for that p by d ratio to get the open water efficiency and we choose the point for which we have the highest open water efficiency just like the case before. So, for this particular value of open water efficiency we can compute the value of j right and because v a is known from the speed of the ship and wake fraction, we can calculate the diameter d because r p m n was 
known in this particular problem. And again this procedure can be repeated for other values of blade area ratio. In this way we can get the different set of design points and arrive at the propeller design which gives us the optimum diameter corresponding to the maximum efficiency. Now these two methods can be used for preliminary design for estimation of the propeller diameter and RPM and from that we can get the power of the propeller because corresponding to the maximum efficiency again we can calculate the kq and we can calculate the torque and finally the delivered power of the propeller. So, these methods give an initial estimate for the basic parameters like diameter and rpm of the propeller design and the delivered power required for the particular design. Now, we will go on to a slightly detailed propeller design procedure where inputs from these methods can be used with the entire speed power curve of the ship to get a more detailed design method where the final propeller design can be obtained with respect to the requirements like cavitation and blade strength sequence. Now, for the detailed propeller design procedure using methodical series data, a series of input parameters are used. The first one being the effective power versus speed curve for the ship for which we are designing the propeller. Next, we have the hull propeller interaction coefficient, the engine power derated to continuous service rating RPM propeller type that we are using because that will correspond to the methodical series that we will be using, the number of blades, the immersion of the propeller axis h which is important for calculation of the cavitation criteria. Now we will calculate the delivered power and the advance speed using the given expressions and based on that the first step here will be to calculate the expression k q divided by j raise to the power pi. Why is this particular expression chosen here? Because the delivered power and rpm are known, because k q can be related to the delivered power and rpm and propeller diameter is will be an output in this design procedure. So, k q by j to the power 5 is used to enter into the propeller design series charts. Now, there are different methods in which propeller design can be done using the methodical series data approach. The exact method followed will depend on the propeller designer and also the input data which is available in the design process and the design can be approached in different ways. So, in each of these methods there is a non dimensional parameter like this one which is used to enter the open water charts. The charts can be expressed as simple open water diagrams or BP delta charts which we will be using in this particular method and these charts can be used to get the propeller design parameters typically the geometrical aspects of the propeller and also the operational aspects like RPM given the specific design constants to get the final design of the propeller. Okay. Now, these parameters that we use to enter into the open water charts will depend on the available input parameters. Now, we will again choose a particular methodical series data and finally, get the j and eta o from the optimum efficiency line. In this method, we will use a different version of the open water charts where this expression is related to 1 by j for different p by d ratios for the propeller and this pink line shows the optimum efficiency line. So, this follows the class of charts which represent the type 
called BP delta chart which were discussed under the methodical series data for propellers and delta is 1 by j in the BP delta diagram as discussed. So, here we have this value as input and for different propeller pitch ratios which are given by these horizontal green lines, we can calculate the location of the optimum efficiency which can correspond to that design point. The usefulness of this chart is that the optimum efficiency line is already given so that we can interpolate to get our design point. Now, the calculated value of this expression is shown here in this encircled point which is our design point which we will use to enter into this diagram. We arrive at the optimum efficiency line and for that point we get the P by D ratio and also we can get the open water efficiency by interpolation for that specific design point and that is the output from this design curve. So, for the given calculated input parameter we get the j eta o and p by d as the outputs from these open water charts. Now, in the next step we calculate the different parameters based on the input and the values that are obtained from the open water charts. Here V s is the input, the next three terms are calculated as mentioned and from the optimum efficiency line in the design chart we get the value of j and eta o and finally, we calculate this expression. P d was known eta r and eta h was given as an input to this design calculation, but we did not know the value of eta o which was estimated from the design chart. So, now we have this expression P d multiplied by eta o, eta r and eta h which is nothing but the design value of the effective power because these three efficiency components relate the effective power P e to the delivered power P d. So, here P e is the effective power P d is the delivered power. Now, in this specific design problem the variation of the effective power versus ship speed was given. So, the red line is an input to the problem for each particular value of speed we can do this design calculation and obtain the corresponding j and eta o and get the design value of this particular expression P d multiplied by eta o, eta r and eta h and let us say it is represented by the blue line. So, the intersection of these two lines will give us the design point. Next, we get the particular design point and for that specific case we calculate the propeller diameter based on this expression because in this particular problem the propeller diameter is an output of the design process and in this manner the diameter and pitch ratio of the propeller is determined in the design process. Now, this procedure will be repeated for different A e by A 0 values because the blade area ratio is an important factor for cavitation calculation which we will do next. So, the inputs for this calculation will be the propeller diameter, pitch ratio, the open water efficiency and V a are known. Next we calculate the cavitation number for the representative section at 0.7 r on the propeller blade. The details have been discussed in the lecture under propeller cavitation and this propeller cavitation number can be related to the thrust loading coefficient using Burrell's chart which gives the 
acceptable limits of cavitation for different propeller designs. And we can calculate the thrust from the delivered power and then get the projected area for the propeller blade and finally, the required A e which is the expanded area can be calculated. Now, in this way for a given set of input parameter satisfying cavitation criteria, we can get the required A e by A 0 value for the propeller blade. Now, for each initial A e by A 0 which we assumed at the beginning of the design process we can do this set of cavitation calculation to get a required A e by A 0 values. Now, for certain values of the initial A e by A 0, we will see that the cavitation criteria will not be satisfied and for certain cases it will be satisfied. The idea is in the design process we have learned that if very high values of A e by A 0 is used, then cavitation criteria will be satisfied, but the blade section drag will be very high. So, the efficiency will fall. On the other side, if we have a very low value of blade area ratio for the design propeller, then the chances of cavitation will be high. That is why an optimum value is required to maintain both the efficiency as well as cavitation characteristics. So, here for every initial value of A by A 0, we can plot all these different parameters d p by d eta o and v a as in the design charts we entered with an initial value of a e by a 0. So, by changing that we will have a range of d p by d eta o under the propeller design curve. Now, using the cavitation criteria we can calculate the required a e by a 0 for each initial value. If we take a 45 degree line here which is equal to the initial A e by A 0 value, the intersection will be the point where the initial A e by A 0 is same as the required A e by A 0. So, it can be taken as the design point and the parameters at that specific intersection can be chosen in the design process. So, we use the same set of curves here to get the optimum diameter P by D ratio and design A e by A 0. And finally, the attained speed for that specific blade area ratio is given by this expression. So, next the blade strength needs to be checked. Here the interesting part of the design process is whatever we have learnt under different parts the calculation of thrust torque efficiency from the open water diagram cavitation, blade strength everything will be used in the design process to get the final design of the propeller which corresponds to an optimum value of efficiency and satisfying cavitation and strength requirements. So, in this particular case blade strength can be checked based on classification society rules for the minimum thickness required for different blade sections and the shaft diameter is also determined. Finally, we will do the performance estimation for the propeller. Now, here we have the standard A by A 0 values for the specific series and we calculate these parameters for the design A by A 0 values which is already done. And here for the selected P by D value, we will vary the value of J in the propeller curves which are shown here for the different j values here denoted as 1 by j for the given p by d which is the design p by d which is obtained now we get different kq by j 5 so we go the reverse way now we have obtained the value of p by d pitch ratio which is the design value and for the different values of j for that particular design p by d we get the respective values of kq by j to the power 5 to the power 1 by 4 okay which is used in the open water charts. And finally, we will use this particular expression and eta o to calculate k t by j square. Why? Because k t by j square will be used for the final powering calculations for the design propeller. So, for the given values of this expression and eta o, k t by j square can be expressed in this form. 
and next we use this to get the value of kt by j square for a range of j and eta o for the design propeller. Now the propeller is already designed at this step, we are going to obtain the power for this particular propeller, the powering demand and check with the engine power to get the final engine propeller matching. So, here k t by j square can be expressed with respect to the effective power in this form, again we have the number of propellers because this is for only one propeller. So, if this is a single screw vessel then number of propellers is 1 and finally, we have the chart where the inputs are V s and P e which are given in this problem the effective power curve at different speeds and finally, for the measured value of j and eta o for the design propeller we get the value of rpm and the engine brake power from the effective power side. So, we have eta o, eta r, eta h and eta s a shafting efficiency which is assumed and we get the brake power which is required for that design propeller. So, we will use this calculated brake power curve for the propeller which is the red curve and we have seen that the relationship assumed was cubic in nature for a specific propeller within a particular design range and this can be intersected with the engine curve for a diesel engine. For a diesel engine the brake power versus rpm is typically a straight line and this propeller curve can be compared with the engine curve and we can get the speed that we are achieving at the design point. So, the final performance estimation for the propeller which is already designed is to achieve the power with respect to the engine power and the speed that the ship will achieve for the design propeller. So, this brings us to the end of the methodical series propeller design approach. In this way we can use the different open water charts under methodical series propeller design approach to obtain the final propeller design and ship powering characteristics for the specific operation conditions. So, this will be all for the propeller design part of this course. Some references are mentioned here which can be used to understand different aspects of marine propeller design. Thank you.